Hello and welcome. I'm Franco Parcas Payet, and this talk is part of the Nearly Carbon Neutral uh, Geometric Topology Conference. I will be speaking as part of the hyperbolic geometry and manifold session. Uh, my talk is on hyperbolic limits of Anderson complements in S3. So I want, first of all, to start by uh, thanking all the organizers for putting this conference together, especially during these difficult times. Uh, all the work I will be talking about uh, right now is uh, joint work with Thomas Kromashi, some of our upcoming work. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit of the uh, motivation that leads to the question uh, we end the study. So there is already has been some work on hyperbolization of Anderson complements in the three-dimensional sphere. For instance, there is this work of Soto and Stover in 2013 and of my collaborator Kramashi and Soto in 2018, where they give uh, a nice wide variety of examples of Cantor sets complement with the property. When, you know, whenever it's hyperbolizable, I mean that uh, they possess a complete uh, hyperbolic metric. Uh, there's also some work, uh, I think, of Kramashi in 2018, where he, uh, it analyzes some class of hyperbolizable manifolds where the main condition for this family is that each of these manifolds uh, might not be in of a compact manifold, but it requires the, an exhaustion by compacts of manifolds with incompressible boundary, and also requiring that each component uh, of this boundary has bounded genus bounded by cubicles. Uh, with the type of family that we're going to be examined, we're going to require the submanifold MI to be in uh, power injective, not only the boundary, and we're going to impose no restriction over the genus. So that's a little bit of context. Uh, so one of the similarities that we has with another uh, well-known topic is that there is quite a flexibility on examples, something that uh, to maybe remind you what occurs with no complements and the many versions of the statement uh, that most nodes uh, complements are going to be hyperbolic. And in view of that, there is the following result of Porcel and Soto from 2010, which leads to the question, which more or less hints at the question we end addressing, which is assume that you're looking at the manifold that embeds in R3 is hyperbolic, is one-ended uh, of finite type, uh, then M is the geometric limit of hyperbolic non complements. I'm going to say a little bit more in a second about what do I mean, how to remind you what do I mean by geometric limit, but let me now show you the uh, main statement this talk is going to be addressing, which is the following. Uh, given that we have some hyperbolic manifold that one admits uh, A embedding into the three dimensional sphere, and two, it possess this uh, exhaustion by complex of manifolds, which are pi one injective. Again, we're requiring this of manifold itself to be pi one injective, not the boundary. The boundary is allowed to have uh, compression. This. Then what we claim is that there exists some sequence of counter set complements such that the following two things happen. One is that each counter set, each of these counter sets, can be hyperbolizable, and very importantly, two. Uh, this sequence of hyperbolic manifolds converges in the geometry sense to M. Uh, so, quick reminder about what do I mean there by geometric convergence. I mean that for uh, having some fixed points assigned, given any radius R and given any small uh, enough constant epsilon, for sufficiently high term in your sequence, there is going to be a bilicious map between the R ball in M and its image uh, in NI. Yep. Uh, so let me name a couple examples of what are the objects uh, that result before addressing more or less what are the, is going to be our strategy in order to prove it. So in order to see a couple examples, okay. What are hyperbolic manifolds that we can easily see that they embed into S3? Well, we have uh, the product of a closed surface of genus greater than equal to two with a real line. So those ones satisfy the property. Uh, we can see the case, for instance, if M were going to be uh, 
uh, a humble body. By this, I mean that Egni is obtained for a close uh, tree ball by attaching some one handles. So you should imagine in, in this picture, it's not just the genus surface, but it's a solid uh, three dimensional region this is enveloping. Uh, both of this. Uh, Manifold, they are uh, hyperbolic, and they of course embed into uh, a string. And regarding the examples for Cantor set complements, well, there is the traditional Cantor set uh, that one can construct, say, in the real line, and then just realize that into a string by just embedding the real line. Uh, but there are more, uh, there are some other examples of Cantor set complements exhibit another type of behavior. For instance, there is the example of Antoine's necklace, which was uh, sorry, by Antoine's, which is, uh, again, it's an inductive construction and then the control says in the limit, but instead of subdividing uh, segments, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a solid tori, and then we're going to start, uh, replace the solid tori by this a string of calling uh, a smaller tori, right, which I'm coloring them by uh, different colors, and then each of these five uh, little tori, we keep so dividing it by following this pattern. Uh, well, the halo of this is that as long as we make sure that the diameter of each of this tori, uh, the maximum diameter of every step is a sequence that's going to zero, then the set we're going to obtain in the limit is going to be a counter set. I said so that in this case, its complement, for instance, is going to be a not simple complement which will be the case for the traditional counter set complex. So just to highlight that uh, the complement region, which is what we're interested in, uh, can change depending how it can change your, your example. Now we're going to see some of the examples we're going to be looking at exhibit a little bit of this picture, meaning a lot of uh, calling happening, a lot of construction. Okay. So let me tell you the sketch, uh, our strategy, the sketch of the proof. So again, you should imagine M. It can be this very complicated object topologically, maybe infinitely created, but I want to see that has an exhaustion uh, by this compromise. So the first step is going to be reduced to the case when M is interior of a compact manifold. Uh, then the next one is going to say that it's going to be sufficient to prove it for the manifolds that only have handle body in their complements. And again, I remind you that handle body is just a close ball, a close tree ball with some one handle attached to it. And then the part three, which is the part that actually constructs the cantor set. So the cantor set is when we have every component is going to be a handle body, we're going to keep compressing this in the complement. And then we're going to attach handle bodies uh, to this boundary. So what we're doing is we're attaching handle bodies to the boundary of M to construct a new manifold. So that's going to be uh, N1. And then we're going to keep so dividing each handle body complementing more and more pieces, uh, mimicking the construction for, uh, for a handle set. Then we have to make sure for a couple of things, for instance, that the diameter is going to zero. And along all this conversation, we have to Every time that we reduce, we have to check that we are uh, producing a hyper, uh, manifold, which is a hyperbolic. So let me see. Uh, step one is uh, more or less straightforward, but it's going to let me to explain a little feature. Uh, well, by requirement, we are asking our manifold to have this by one injective exhaustion. Uh, so this is going to immediately translate into the fact that each manifold is going to be hyperbolic. Its geometric limit is going to be M, that comes from the exhaustion part. And of course, all these manifolds MI, they're going to embed into S3, and that's because M already did. And moreover, uh, by density, uh, we can assume that each of these MI is going to be convex compact, meaning each end is going to have uh, can be associated to a uh, quotient of an open domain of the two sphere as the boundary for the three dimensional uh, hyperbolic space. And the reason why I want to say that these objects uh, 
proving the result for this m i is going to be sufficient to prove it for m is because by, our, by the definition of geometric limit, if you approach m i uh, by kind of set complements, then you can basically do this counter diagonal like idea, meaning you can each uh, each m i is going to have its own sequence. You can pick elements in the sequence which are going to be counter set complements that are going to approach better and better each m i, hence they're going to approach better and better m. That's how you pass the knowing the result for the m i's to knowing the result for the limit, which is going to be m. And this is an idea we're going to be passing passing along uh, every time uh, during every step. So it will be a little bit very loaded with notation if I, if I, if, uh, I tell you right now how to put the errors, but hopefully I can convince you it's not too much of a problem. There are a couple of combination results uh, I want to quickly remind you, and this is just because once we have a condition, I want to start including stuff. Uh, I want to justify that all of that is going to be allowed. What the flames one is going to be this type of plain massive combination which is the following. Suppose I have here represented a uh, closed manifold M, and I can pick some disk in the bus. First of this in the boundary, I want to attach one handles to them, such that the result is going to be hyperbolic. Uh, this can be easily be obtained by you just take the corresponding disk uh, in S2, and, now, and then you take the Lusodronium element that's going to send the exterior of one little disk, to the interior of the other little bit. And there's a whole result about like, if you take uh, the group generated by the fundamental group of human together with that lossotromic element, you're going to take a hyperbolic manifold uh, where topologically is exactly attaching by the one hand. And because, you know, we have some freedom, the only requirement we have for this disk is to be honest, embedded disk, is that if we pick this little disk to be a smaller and a smaller and a smaller, then what this lower dotted line is trying to represent is that as you send the radius of those disks in S2 to zero, then this sequence of manifolds were constructed here with the one handle attached, they are going to converge back to M. Okay, which is going to be important because we're going to prove things for the object on the, uh, on the right with the object with the one handle attached, but we want to eventually go back to our original object by taking a geometric limit. So this property is going to be important. So this is one of the combination results we're going to need. And the other one is the analogous version, but uh, with the cyclic, is the cyclic amalgamation version. So for this, what do we need? Again, we start with some hyperbolic manifold M. Now we're going to take a curve in the boundary, which is, needs to be uh, incompressible. So this is, if we take a cylinder around that curve, that's going to lift to the universal cover uh, of this boundary component to a disk, right? So it's going to be this disk uh, in this upper component bounded by uh, the curves in red. And then what we're going to require is the existence of a hyperbolic manifold that the topological type is going to be this one-ended, um, this one-ended surface times uh, times the interval, such that uh, first of all, this the boundary component corresponds to the same element in the boundary of M we started with, and the limit set for this manifold is included uh, in the disk uh, with boundary in red. If we satisfy this condition, then we can take these two groups, take the group that they generate. So the group they generate is again, it's going to be a Kleinian group, it's going to generate an honest hyperbolic tree manifold, is going to be isomorphic to the cyclic amalgamation of these two groups by the common, uh, by the common loxodromic element. <laughs> and moreover, if we keep taking uh, for the manifold in green, such that the tube against this geodesic is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, then uh, we're going to obtain a sequence of fluids that's going to converge back to one, which is again uh, a feature of this that we see. 
Okay, so there are more precise statements about when do you satisfy when you can make such gluings, but I, uh, I want to at least, I want to give you uh, the picture to have something in mind. Uh, the top requirements now done, so let's go back to step two. So let's see that we can assume now that the complement is given by a union of handle bodies. Well, we just take the embedding of M and the uh, technique is going to be, we're going to attach one handles to the boundary of M to obtain uh, potentially a, lo a little bit bigger uh, submanifold sphere. But this one is going to have complement equal to the union of handle bodies. So how do you do that? Well, the complement of M, uh, because we're already assuming that M is compact, it's just a union uh, of this young compact manifold, each of them is going to have a Kegel splitting, where uh, on one side, you're going to have the handle body you desire, and the intermediate region between the boundary of M and the boundary of that handle body is exactly given by attaching one hand, which is you know, what we just claimed. So the level of topology, uh, we now understand what happens. So now what we need to understand is that first of all, this new object M prime is uh, also hyperbolic. And moreover, we can put uh, hyperbolic structure on them, the uh, family of them that in the limit, it just gives you back the object M. And if you think about that for a second, that's exactly the setup we have for the first combination result. We, where we just go, we can do this attachment of one handles, and then attach less, uh, reduce the size of this disk more and more, to return to our original object as a geometric limit. So this is what happened in the okay. So let's now dive into step three, the countersign construction. So now for this, uh, I'm going to divide it in three sub-steps. First one is I want to find curves in the boundary of M that are, uh, we require them to be unwind injective in M and compressible in S3. Well, how do we achieve that? We achieve that by taking non-separating curves in the boundary which are compressing into S3. So what we'll need to prove there is that these curves are compressible in our one injective in it. If they weren't, that means that these curves in orange, they're going to bound at this, which is in the complement of this handed body, which is or M is. So if you glue that disk together with the orange disk we have here, we're going to have a two sphere in a string, which needs to be separated. But because the orange curve was not separating uh, in the boundary of the handle body, that's going to be impossible. Okay, so this is just uh, how we put these examples, and you know we just produce enough of them so we at least have two different compartments in the interior of the handle body uh, because we're constructing a counter set. We want to keep subdividing our set in more and more uh, disconnected pieces. Uh, so this is something we can do. Uh, so now I'm going to describe you uh, the handle body mode to attach. So what we want to do in this previous picture is to each, we don't, we don't want to just attach the uh, orange disk, we want to attach something such that the resource is going to be hyperbolizable and close enough to the original uh, starting point. So we're going to be attaching handle bodies here, very much like in the discussion uh, of the second combination uh, result I told you. So I have to guarantee uh, the setup we discussed then. So let me tell you how to do it. So one thing you can do to produce this handle body uh, is to do the following. You can you know, you take your non-compressible curve in M, you leave a, a cylinder around into this disk with right boundary, and now you can take a sequence of circles, of only circles in S2, that are tangent uh, to one another in this, uh, in this sequence, 
and their periodic IP logarithmic element uh, collapses uh, that quotients this disk into the cylinder we took in the bubble. If you start gluing this uh, circles in the pattern of how you will glue uh, a surface, then the topology, uh, first of all, you're going to obtain a hyperbolic manifold and the topology of, uh, of it is going to be given by the interior of taking one ended surface times uh, the interval zero to one, except that as in the case, in the case that we wanted, we want that as a surface with just one in the component. Here we're going to have one boundary component, but it's also going to have a round one cusp. This round one cusp comes from the tangency of the circles when you start taking the corresponding transformation. Uh, so it's not quite the picture we want, except that we can deal with the cusp. So let me tell you quickly how to deal with it. So uh, something that's already happening in this picture is if you ignore the cusp, we will be done meaning we're going to produce an object that has its limit set where it needs to be. And because we can take the circles smaller and smaller, it's going to be, uh, we're going to converge back to M. Uh, so how do we deal with the cusp? So we can take another manifold of this type that now has uh, only one cusp, only one round one cusp. And now you, something that you can do is do this version for cyclic amalgamation, uh, but now using the cusp, not using a compressible curve. But usually, each, because we're working uh, geometrically from the setup, each round one cusp is going to have uh, two tangent orbitals there, where the only, uh, they are only left invariant by the parabolic uh, transformation. So something that you do is you can glue each, uh, you can glue the round one cusp of your, of the, of the handle we just produced with this R model we're bringing into the picture, you can glue them on one side and you can glue them at the other side uh, by this cyclic amalgamation result. So when you do that, what you're going to produce is uh, the object of the type that we wanted, except that uh, it's going to have a run to cast with the middle, which comes exactly by this simplification of the run. Uh, so how do we deal with that? Well, we can just then fill that cusp to produce down uh, the example, to produce down the topology we want. Uh, so we can do hyperbolic stem filling. And moreover, we can, the, if you look to the Torre around this, this from uh, two cusp, you can quotient the, the closed curve of coordinates one n in terms of meridian uh, and longitude. And you want to question those ones because you still want to know what is the topological type at the end, because this is the object, this is the handle you're going to attach. Uh, <laughs> the main observation is like every time that you are making all this, all these gluings, you are very close in the geometric sense to your initial object. So we just need to pile up all these errors to produce a sufficiently small error. Yeah. Okay, so with this, this is the model for the handle we need to attach for each of these uh, orange tests. So that's good because now after we attach them, now the new for the new manifold, the complement is going to be two handle bodies. One is going to be on one side of the orange to this, the other one is going to be on the other side, uh, which are smaller. Uh, they're going to be like very linked into one another, kind of like keeping a little bit too models was going into Antoine's Nicholas, we're replacing uh, an object by linked objects inside. Uh, we just need to make sure that the diameter uh, goes down to zero in order to produce a counterset uh, complement. So how do we do that? Well, instead of calling it a day after we did this gluing at the orange disk, uh, we can keep gluing over uh, those same curves until we assure that every single complement, the diameter has fallen at least by half. So how do you do that? Uh, you can take a nerve of this handle body, and you can subdivide this nerve into uh, finally many pieces, but you make every one of these pieces uh, arbitrarily small. 
So once you do that, uh, you can. The new manifold is going to have uh, each complement, each complement to complementary part is going to be as close as we desire to one of these components of the nerve. So what is a way of seeing that? Well, if we just did uh, the quotient for the orange uh, disc in here, right? We will be only producing, uh, we will be only producing uh, handle body complements that are close between the part of the nerve that stay on one side of the orange disc and part of the nerve that stay at the other side of the orange disc. But if we now collapse furthermore, like say we collapse here, 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 and here, so we're again collecting this in curve. This is all going to be parallel injected because it's going to be completely because it's going to be preserved. Now every new part is going to be uh, very close to each of these new components of the nerve. And we can just keep doing them to a string. Uh, and the diameter is going to fall by whatever parameter we want as soon as uh, in our initial division of the nerve, uh, we subdivide it uh, finally. Okay? So this is going to be the iterative process. Uh, because the diameter is going to zero, then uh, of course, uh, we're obtaining a uh, counter set uh, into the complement in order to show that we have a hyperbolic manifold. Well, remember that at every time we can take an error in the geometric sense as small as we want. Uh, we want to pile this up in infinite ways, so all that we just need to make sure is that when we pile all these one plus epsilon errors, they uh, compile together to a one plus epsilon prime error, which is still small enough. Uh, by doing that, we're going to produce our antistyle complement as close as we want it to our original manifold. So a couple of quick conclusions. Uh, of course, what the theory is telling you is that counter-set complements are dense among hyperbolic manifolds that embed into a stream. And one clear corollary for that is that well, counter-set complements should exhibit as much behavior as the manifolds that we know we can embed into a stream. So for instance, we can find counter-set complements with arbitrarily large geodesic balls in them. Uh, or we can find it's, uh, there should always exist a counter set complement with a compact region which is arbitrarily close to our favorite compact region of our favorite chalky or quasi functional manifold. Where, of course, arbitrarily close and still so speaking in the uh, geometric one plus epsilon by the distance. Uh, well, that's all I have to say right now. So thank you so much uh, if you make it a bit clear. And I will be having the office hour session in case you have uh, questions or observations about that. So thank you again.